Have you ever heard of the Apple ecosystem? I'm referring to the magical continuity between all your Apple devices, like your iPhones, iPads, Macs, Apple Watches, Apple TVs, and AirPods. All of these devices can talk and integrate into ways other companies haven't been able to master. So let's take a look at some of the features that connect all of your Apple products, making it a bit harder to switch to something else. Before getting into the video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Before taking a look at any individual features, here are the requirements to yield the best results. First, all of your devices should be running the latest software updates and signed in with the same iCloud account with two-factor authentication enabled. Also, Bluetooth should be enabled and all of your devices connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Now, if you don't check all of these boxes, there's still a chance that some of these features may work, so it won't hurt to try anyways. The first feature we'll take a look at is AirDrop, which allows you to send files to other Apple devices wirelessly. Let's take a look at how to do this. So I'm going to open photos and select the photo or multiple photos that I want to share. Then click the share button to open the share sheet and check out all the ways I can send my photos. Next. I'm going to select AirDrop from the list of services. Now I'm given a list of all the Apple devices in my vicinity, both my own and others. From there, just tap on the device or person you want to share with and it's sent. If you want to change who can AirDrop files to you, you can manage those settings through Control Center. So swipe down from the top right of your screen if you don't have a home button and swipe up from the bottom of your screen if you do have a home button. Now, long press on network services and long press again on airdrop to view its settings. You can either allow anyone to wirelessly airdrop files to you or just those in your contacts, which is my recommendation. Beyond photos, you can airdrop just about anything that has an iOS share button like contacts, documents, websites, and more. Up next, handoff, a feature that lets you quickly pick up where you left off on another device. For instance, you start writing an email on your iPhone. When you get back to your desk, you want to switch over and continue writing that email on your Mac. So with the Mail app open on your iPhone, switch over to your Mac and open the Mail app from the handoff portion of the dock. And voila, you can continue writing that email on your Mac. Handoff works across all your devices. So if you start writing a text on your Apple Watch, you can pick it up from your iPhone. If you're browsing the web on your iPad, you can pass it to your iPhone. iPhone users can find handoff apps in multitasking while Mac and iPad users can find them on the dock. To enable or disable handoff on your iPhone or iPad, open General, Settings, Airplane, Handoff. On your Mac, go to System Preferences, General, and look for Allow Handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices. Now, let's look at Universal Clipboard. But before getting into the details, we need to look at what the clipboard is. So whenever you cut or copy something, it gets temporarily saved to your clipboard. In short, it's a list of everything you have cut and copied. When you paste, it grabs the last thing you copied or cut, AKA the item at the top of your clipboard. Universal Clipboard creates one shared clipboard that syncs between all of your devices. So if you copy a picture on your iPad, you can paste it on your Mac or copy a link on your iPhone and paste it to your iPad. So Macs still don't have touch screens as Apple refuses to add the feature. They gave the MacBook Pro a touch bar, but that's more of a gimmick than a useful feature. So to supplement the missing touch screen, Apple created Sidecar, a feature that lets you use your iPad as an external monitor for your Mac. So if you ever had a multi-monitor setup before, you know it can make multitasking so much easier. Not only does it operate as an external monitor, but you can also interact with your Mac using your Apple Pencil. It's a great companion for any high-end desktop art and design apps like Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. So to use this feature, open the display settings on your Mac from Control Center and choose your iPad as a display source. If you need to reconfigure how your iPad is arranged, you can do so from within the Displays Preference pane. Have you ever wanted to scan a document to your Mac? 
but don't have a scanner? Well, right click on your desktop, then go to import from iPhone or iPad and choose scan document under the device you want to use as a scanner. Now, hold that iPhone or iPad over a page and either let it auto take or snap it yourself once you get it in the frame. Then continue capturing each page. After the document is scanned, you can tap on the thumbnail to preview and edit your pages. Your editing options include cropping, changing the color filter, rotating, and deleting the page. If there's a page you would like to completely redo, tap the retake button at the top. Once you get all the pages scanned, edited, and you're satisfied with the preview, click done and save, and now your scan document will appear as a PDF on your Mac. Going back to that right click menu on your Mac, you will find two other options for importing content to your Mac from your mobile iPhone or iPad. With Photo, you can take one picture with your iPhone or iPad that imports to your Mac. Your last option is Sketch, where you can use your touch screen device to make a drawing that will save to your Mac. It's perfect for iPad users with an Apple Pencil. This is only the start of the continuity features embedded into the Apple ecosystem. There are so many more out there, so many in fact, I can't cover them all at once. So stay tuned to next week's video where we will cover more continuity features across the Apple ecosystem. So do you use any of these continuity features? Will you start using any of these features? How about are you leaving with more questions and answers? Well, you can leave all of that and more in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Also, check out the description where you can find more info about these continuity features, links to our website, appleguideweb.com, and our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at Apple Guide Web, along with the Apple Guide Podcast, where you can listen to this video in audio form. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.